Dental care for poor children is in crisis in Maryland. It's a crisis that's launched a congressional investigation, prompted a federal agency review, and killed at least one child. Now lawmakers have an opportunity to fix dental care before another Maryland child is lost. There are 400,000 poor children in Maryland who need dental care. Despite the recommendation that they see a dentist twice every year, only one out of three of these children manages to see a dentist even once a year. This poor access to dental care is due in great part to very low Medicaid dental reimbursement rates in Maryland. Because the rates are so low, fewer than one out of 10 dentists in Maryland will accept children on Medicaid. In Cecil County, Charles County, and Kent County, there is only one dentist providing significant care to all the children enrolled in Medicaid. The federal government describes the network of private dentists accepting Medicaid patients in Maryland as grossly inadequate. To compound the problem, the network of public dental clinics has been devastated in the past 10 years by budget cuts. The scarcity of dentists and facilities, both public and private, has made it nearly impossible for parents to find timely, appropriate, and geographically accessible care for their children. I was alarmed to find that there was not that many providers at all, and some of the providers that I called never returned my call. All I got was a referral to the University of Maryland. If you call University of Maryland, you're going to get an appointment <laughs> four months from now. And that's why, because there's a lack of services. There are oftentimes uh, a three-month wait before the child can get to the operating room. Sometimes we will uh, have to go ahead and take out the front teeth and restrain the child to do that, which is really heartbreaking. I can't imagine how a young child suffers through the pain and discomfort from untreated dental disease that I see on a daily basis in my office. All 20 teeth may be diseased. They have to be put to sleep um, under general anesthesia, a tube, a machine breathing for them for us to treat the disease. In February 2007, our dental crisis became fatal. Diamante Driver, a 12-year-old from Prince George's County, died when an infection in his tooth spread to his brain. His death made international headlines and moved federal legislators to investigate causes and solutions. The case of Diamante Driver is one that um, haunts me over and over and over again. Uh, every time I see a child in my neighborhood, a young child, I think about Diamante. What the world could not understand is how a child in the United States on Medicaid, which is required to provide coverage for dental care, could be allowed to die from an untreated tooth infection. Medicaid is a whole lot different with regular doctors than with dental. Now with the with the doctors, the it's fine. Shots are up to date, you can get a physical, you can get whatever you want with a doctor. But to get a dentist, if you don't have top insurance, you're in trouble. John Colmers, Secretary of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, is responsible for Maryland's Medicaid program. During the special session, he testified at a joint hearing of the Senate Finance Committee. We had a tragedy in this state that should never be repeated, uh, in which a young man, Diamante Driver, uh, died of untreated dental uh, disease, uh, in part driven by the fact that access to Medicaid dental services for children and others are not sufficient. I created a dental action committee uh, that submitted recommendations uh, to me uh, on how to improve access to dental care in the Medicaid program. The Dental Action Committee made three major recommendations. First, raise reimbursement rates to the 50th percentile, the average amount charged by Maryland dentists for each procedure. Second, reduce paperwork for dentists and make the system easier for parents to navigate by establishing a single statewide dental plan for Medicaid. Currently, seven separate medical managed care organizations handle dental care through contracts with three separate dental managed care organizations. The resulting complexity makes the system nearly impenetrable. In order for Ms. Driver to get dental care for Diamante's brother, Deshaun, she had to enlist the help of Lori Norris, an attorney. It was real hard. I still got some of the papers where I have wrote down numbers where they say, well, we don't have an appointment for six months, so we're not taking, most of the time is we don't take your insurance, and 
Um, we don't have appointments for this amount of time or that amount of time. And his mouth was hurting worse and worse. He was sent home from school a couple of times for his mouth. I had my administrative assistant start at the top of the list calling these contracted dentists. She called 26 dentists, the first 26 names on the list, and asked if they took Sean's plan, and they all said no. So the next thing that I did was I called the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene Health Choice Helpline. I finally spoke to a supervisor there who understood the problem and agreed to help. She involved a case manager in her department, a case manager in Prince George's County Local Health Department, as well as a case manager at the medical plan. All of those folks worked together to try to find a dentist for Sean. It took them a week to do it, but they eventually did it. So ultimately, it took one mother, one lawyer, one helpline supervisor, and three case management professionals to find a dentist for one Medicaid child. Finally, we need to open and staff more public dental clinics. We cannot solve this problem with private dentists alone. Dental disease is preventable and treatable. In Maryland, it requires only political will and moral courage to ensure that no more children, like Diamante Driver, suffer the far-reaching and sometimes tragic consequences of poor oral health. Thank you for supporting and funding solutions to Maryland's dental care crisis.